Yes, um, well, done everyone for coming at 9 o'clock on a Sunday morning. I'm really quite impressed. I'm, I'm going to sit down for this because I'm really tired and sick and generally have no energy. So uh, apologies if uh, you can't see me or something. I'm just like, no. So, um, yeah, so my name is Greg Sutcliffe. I am the community lead for the Foreman Project. I'm not going to talk about Foreman today. If you want to know about that, come and see us at our booth. What I am going to talk about is, um, or what I want to do is to get you guys to do the talking because, as I said, I am all tired and sick. So, the idea here is, I've not been doing this for that long, uh, for about a year and a half. Uh, I was a developer and a sysadmin before that. This is not my... Uh, core strength, shall we say. Um, and there are situations that come up in our community that I think are interesting. I think they're not unique to us. I think they're worth talking about. Maybe I can learn from you guys, we can learn from each other. Maybe we can have a little discussion. Um, let me start by talking about what I mean by the loops. So possibly this is a, a term that, that uh, people uh, want to clarify. I'm a, a fan of GTD, getting things done. Uh, and in that book, uh, they define a, a loop as this. Anything pulling at our attention that does not belong where it is, the way it is. Or in the case of virtual communities, things like undecided RFCs, unfinished discussions, unfinished reviews, PRs that are open, stuff that is not done yet. Stuff we have started, but we have not finished. And I don't know about you guys, we have a lot of this in our community. Um, we, we have a lot of this in our community. Uh, and so I'm going to pick a few examples out. Maybe, hopefully I've got enough content even if you guys just basically want to sleep. Uh, but even if you don't, no, we'll, we'll be fine. So um, I'm going to start with a conclusion uh, because that's fun. So I, as I said, I don't think this is unique to Foreman. I think a lot of online communities and a lot of face-to-face -face communities have these issues. Although I think face-to-face -face it's easier. Uh, there's not going to be a one-size-fits-all solution here. Uh, if there were, we'd all be using it. Uh, there are obviously as many governance policies to open source projects and other projects uh, as there are projects, pretty much. So there's stuff we can learn from each other, stuff we can try. But this is the community track, right? We're all community people. Uh, so maybe we can share some knowledge and maybe I can learn from you guys and take some things away that we can try in our community and maybe you guys can all do the same. So let me start with a quick disclaimer. Um, I've taken all the names out of these scenarios that have come up in our community. However, if you're familiar with the foreman, you're probably still going to be able to figure out who we're talking about. Um, it's just the way it is. But I want to be clear here. No one is at fault. I am not blaming anyone other than the systems that we have. Everybody has the best interest of our project at heart. I firmly believe that. But I think we can improve the systems. So that's where I'm interested in. I am not about pointing fingers at people. So let's start with, with, I've got two main examples, uh, since, since I've probably only got about 15 minutes left technically. Um, I've got two main examples I want to talk about and maybe you can give me some ideas how you might handle the situation. The first one is to do with RFCs or request for comment uh, in, in terminology. So change proposals, big things, things we want to change about how the project works. Not little patches, not bug fixes, but significant amounts of effort that go into changing the direction of the project potentially. And I'm really interested to hear how other people handle this because we had a discussion probably uh, six months ago, or something like that, where we were, we were really struggling. Um, we, were, we were thinking about how to have these discussions. Up until this point, they were happening on our development mailing list. And that's fine, but I don't know whether you guys get the same problem, but a development mailing list has a tendency to just die out. You get really good participation for maybe two weeks, um, and then it just kind of trails off, right? It trails into nothing, um, and what's the situation here? Worse, uh, in my opinion, it's difficult to track, and this is specific to RFCs, it's difficult to track how the proposal has been altered over time. You know, someone can write a proposal say, I think we should do things like this. A few other people will make very, very good, very, very good um, comments. So you alter the proposal, you update the proposal, you say, okay, well, now we're going to do it like this because of these comments and so forth. So there's, a, there's an iterative process when it comes to RFCs. But my mailing lists are not good at tracking this. So we started to have a discussion about where we should do this. And we came to the conclusion that we could do it on the mailing list, we could keep it where it is and just accept those problems. We could move it to the wiki. We do have a wiki, um, or we could move it. We could actually use like some kind of uh, Git repo, like GitHub or something like that. Um, all of our stuff's on GitHub anyway, so 
that's got nice tracking of history. It's got nice tracking of, of how a proposal has altered over time. Maybe that would work. And, and we did indeed decide to go for an IFC repo, but now we are sit here six months later, and I'm not sure we're any better off. We've only moved the problem. Discussions are still tailing off into nothingness. There's no decision making happening. And, and I'm really curious to hear from people how they handle that final close down of a discussion. How do you decide when something is done? And in the case of RFCs, what do you, who gets the decision about when do you accept an RFC or when do you reject an RFC? Does anyone want to jump in on this? Um, at least from my experience in that in a uh, discussion ends when somebody starts doing it. Like, uh, there's some ideas <laughs> and they bounce around together yeah. until somebody says, hey, I like that, I'll, I'll do it. And somebody, but you need somebody with the energy, th there's a different energy level yeah. in discussing and throwing around ideas and actually getting... Right, right, right. So for the, yeah. And you need that energy to condense into somebody's hands. Right, so for the video then, I guess, since I've got the mic, that's, uh, that's the case of uh, it's done when someone starts doing it, which is fair, and I think is what happens with our community as well right now. Um, the problem I have with that is that the whole idea of a, and this is great for discussions about technical problems that need solving, but when it comes to RFCs, the idea is always that you should probably accept the RFC first, and then code it. At least that was what was in my head. Maybe I'm being naive. Um, but that was kind of my intention, and that is not what's happened, right? What's ha actually happening is the RFCs get merged when the code has been written and merged as well. And we kind of, it's a de facto acceptance, right? Because we've already done the work, so now we just merge the RFC as well. Um, so that was, that was anything. Anyone else? Uh, so in the Libra project, we have an engineering steering committee. Mm -hmm. Uh, everybody could join that, but you have to be in a weekly telephone call <coughs> and when there is something about you want to discuss and it's not really clear what you want to do, then you bring that over there and discuss it there and then we do a decision or say, okay, it's not final yet, come back in a month and look at this point. So, but there's not much going on that because sure. the project is so large, normally people just merge the stuff. But if there is something really questionable, we say, okay, there's something bad, something was committed, which is not acceptable, then we just cut it there. Cool, cool. So, yeah, so for the video, that's a technical council kind of approach where you have a group of people who get to make the decision, right? And that, I think, works really... For, so I thought about this, and I actually spent a lot of time last Vostem talking with our community about whether we should do this. And most people were in favor of it, and I eventually backed off from, the, from suggesting it uh, more broadly to the project because it felt really heavy for us. We're a lot smaller than something like LibreOffice, right? And, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah. you know, probably 40 people... Okay. Regular committers, and we have a lot of two or three time committers where the people come in and they are. Yeah, I, I guess ten. And yeah. it's not that many people who are employed to work on the road. That's true. That's true. So maybe that would work. Ten of them are probably. And do you have like a, a document that describes how you join that committee and how that works and so on? Is that weekly and online committee? Okay. Work. Cool. Stuff. And everybody can join the telephone mm. calls, nothing is private. Right? Of course, of course, and of course. Everything is written to me for to a mailing list after that, and it says, So it could work. Comment on that, he replies, and we'll develop a mailing list, and probably we will talk about it again. But yeah, the project per se is very large code base, and normally you simply do not conflict with anybody else, except if you've changed very, really plumbing of the rock system. Right, right, okay. Right, right. Sure. So, right, yeah, I'll just, just quickly, because obviously I've got the mic. So, fine for, so what, 40 contributors, regular contributors, you reckon, and that, that works pretty well. Nothing private, it's all summarized. Okay, I think we're probably about 20 regular contributors, um, so maybe that would work for us, actually. That would be quite good. Yeah? Um, I just quickly looked up the HPRFC version, because I kind of knew about it. Um, there's at least minimum um, period of two weeks between when an RFC that just language, language is brought up, and then there's a voting process, which the author gets to choose when to start the voting process, I think. Yeah, the author decides when it's time to move ahead and call a vote on the <laughs> uh, and then people vote. And then there's like other things 
Yeah. Okay, so so yeah. Yeah. So so this is something. Uh, so sorry. Yeah, uh, for the video. Um, so it's a voting process. Minimum two weeks before that's used, and then the author gets to trigger it. Great. We. I, I thought about that as well, and that's something I would like. I would probably like to see more than a technical council, I guess, for us. But I find if you vote on everything, it gets really divisive after a while. Um, I don't know if anyone else has seen that happen, right? If, if you get too many votes that are close to 50-50, and I can't think where I've seen that in the world recently, <laughs> it gets really divisive in your community, right? If it's, uh, it's almost unanimous, then it was kind of happening anyway, but yeah, it's tricky. Is that to say that on the page of the RFC votes? Because they, they tend to solve that during the discussion period. Yeah. Do you find there's a problem getting the what's the right way to put it? So the quieter members of the community to, to jump in on that. Uh, do they participate in the vote at least? <laughs> as far as you know. Is it an anonymous vote? No. no. Yeah, okay. So it, it depends. Uh, the core contributors is a relatively small team. But you've got what they call karma by the ability to vote if you've ever contributed to the HP. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is not. Well, that's the point, isn't it? It's not a democracy, right? It's a meritocracy. People have more weight. So, so yeah. I mean, that's that's definitely something worth thinking about. We. Uh, I, I was wary of voting because of of that kind of issue, but. It does, it does have the advantage. I like the idea that the author gets to choose when, because what, one of the things we put into our, our RFC process was the idea of trying to drive consensus and that the author should spend time talking to people and try and bring it. And if he feels he's done enough of that, then he can, he can trigger that vote, right? So that, that might be a nice system. Um, so that's cool. All right, so that's, that's working well. Let me move on to my second example. Thanks, thanks guys, for, for your contributions to that. That's, that's really useful. Um, let me move on to my second one. This is what happens when discussions potentially go a little bit wrong. Not wrong exactly, but a little bit, shall we say, um, yeah, head to head, a little bit contentious, right? So, so let me give you the scenario that happened. We, we had a proposal, and this was before we did the RFC thing, we had a proposal that came into the mailing list. Uh, and in particular, it was to drop a, a dependency, uh, a, 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 an OS that we built packages for that was getting to be a problem. And we had a pretty good discussion on that thread for a couple of weeks. And then the thread goes nice and quiet, but nothing happened, right? Nobody really said, are we done here? Is this finished? No action was taken. But then suddenly, after about two months of nothing at all on the thread, without pretty much any warning, the thing that was proposed got done. The, the OS was dropped, the packages were taken out of the system, and then a whole group of the community just went, ah, uh, hang on, we weren't done here. Now, you can't fault either side on this one, right? On the one hand, the discussion was looking like it was moving towards dropping that OS anyway, and there was a nice long period of time, and then that OS got dropped. So it looks like proper process, but then the other side of the community were like, well, we, we never actually concluded it, and we were actually kind of relying on that. Um, and you kind of want to say, well, where were you for the last two months? Uh, which we did. <laughs> but, <laughs> but nonetheless, they actually did have a point. There was a pretty significant chunk of the community that was using that OS. And we probably needed to give them a little bit uh, this is the user community rather than the dev community, of course. And that we probably wanted to give them a little bit more warning and talk about how to migrate up to the next version of the OS and make sure that you can move all your data across and so on. And, and there, was, there was a fair amount of upset about that, I would say. Um, it never got ridiculously out of hand. We didn't have people rage quitting or anything like that. But it, it did make a mess, and we ended up with, with um, one of the plugins for the form and deciding to unofficially create packages for one release, just so that they could give their users a little bit more time, which is a fair solution, but not ideal. So, th so my question to the room for this one is then, we've kind of, kind of covered it for the RFC, but it's a little bit different when it comes to, to a situation like this. So when is the discussion done? I guess we've kind of covered that. And that's fine, because I think I've only got about five minutes left anyway. <coughs> 10 minutes left, OK. But here's a different question for you then. How do we handle the differing expectations of groups when you get into situations like this? Does anyone have experience of, of hitting a situation like this where you've got two groups who really thought things were going in a different direction and then suddenly find that someone has to lose out? Was it ever made clear on any kind of notice on, in the former community that a conclusion had been made and there was 
you know, a period, a grace period? No, that's true. The, the OS was dropped without warning after about two months. The person who raised the original request obviously felt the discussion had reached a natural conclusion and that it was therefore okay to, to go ahead. It, it is fair to say the discussion was definitely in favor of dropping it at that point. So, you know, you, in some ways you can't fault him, but I agree it would have been nice to have a grace period. I think, especially when we're working on the internet, where we're not seeing people face to face in an office like, scenario, if you're in an office, you can just say, okay, I think we've no one said anything for two months. Let's take this as the official stand. We've got a grace period of, you know, two weeks or whatever, a month. Because I think that's the, the worst thing is not knowing that something's about to happen or not expecting it. When there's an expectation and you've actually declared that, then no one can default you as either side because you've been clear about your intentions. Yeah, I, and I agree. And that, that would be my only criticism of that side of the debate, was that, that it was done without warning. Yeah. It might be interesting, though, I haven't seen it done yet, to redefine the grace period, which I like as an idea, uh, not just as, if you don't like, this is the status quo of the discussion, and if you don't like it, keep discussing. But this is the status quo of the discussion, this is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like it, uh, say what is your use case, so it could be mm -hmm. taken into consideration when that thing happens. Sure. Sure. So just restating the current position every now and every so often. Make an opening for like mitigating. Yeah. Sure. 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 So add, adding that onto the grace period notice is what you're basically saying. Is yeah. Jump in if you're not done here. So just when you're dealing with stakeholders, I'm kind of curious. How do you go about actually communicating with them? And how do you know? Because I know we don't send as many emails and, and blog posts, but how do you actually know the person's read it so they can actually give you the time to feedback back? Because if you're saying within two months you need to make that decision, how do you know they've read it? How do you reach out to them? How does that work? Very difficult, I would say. Yeah, um, we. We have a developer's mailing list, and we pretty much assume that's the, the source of discussions. Now, the RFC repo was a new thing we added this year to try that out, so have we fragmented it? Probably. Um, but I try and reach out to people I think should be involved in the community, but I make it as a personal effort rather than we don't really have any systems for that in place, right? Um, most of the time, the people I expect to comment on things do comment on things. Um, I've rarely seen a situation where one of our, where, where someone I would consider a stakeholder in a discussion is just absent completely. Um, so there are situations I think that occur because some people don't like the RFC repo and would prefer not to use it. So that becomes an issue um, because they'd rather see all of that happen on the mailing list. But apart from that fragmentation, most people are involved and engaged. I don't worry. Uh, just a quick note about the tool. Uh, I, don't, I can't find it, I don't know what its name, but the uh, FSF, uh, when they were doing the GPL, they had some tool where you could kind of work like you have the GPL and you can make comments about specific parts of it. Okay. And you can hold threads for this specific part, what it should be, why it should be. Okay, that's interesting. So it's very context based. I don't remember. So, so you make an interesting point actually about using other tooling, um, and that's something I wanted to bring up. So I don't know whether it's the same tool, but I was looking at uh, Lumio, which Diaspora Foundation uses for their decision making. Um, and I like the idea, but the problem is it's more fragmentation, right? It's more places in which you can have a discussion, and, and I worry about that a lot. Um, if, I, if I'm already seeing problems with some people refusing to use the RFC repo because they'd rather keep it to the mailing list, this isn't going to make it better. Um, and, and that's, you know... Well, but you can see current status. Right, exactly. And you would have both, I guess, maybe. Like a general discussion in that thing or in the mailing list and specific I'm definitely looking into some kind of automated kind of, at least when people post RFCs, an automatic mail going to the dev mailing list so that people are aware of it. Um, and yeah, you, could, you can have general discussion in both places, I guess. But it's, it's, it's a really nasty one. What's the name of the tool uh, It was called Lumio, was the one I was looking at. Uh, L-O-O-M-I-O. -O -O. I've, I've seen a few projects using it, and it looks interesting, but yeah. So, I hope, I hope so, because I was late. Yeah, sure. So, I'm repeating stuff. Um, but you were, you were talking about the expectations of the actual development, or like, what, like the outcome. But what about the expectations of the decision making itself? Are, are they clear? I think, I think that's an important question. Um, so, what, 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 I'm trying, what I'm trying to say is um, is there a, a clear way that um, someone makes a decision or a decision is resolved? So. Um, 
So if, if a technical decision is made that is not in my favor, did it happen in a process or in a way that is transparent and that, that I understand? So for example, most projects have to do with the benevolent dictator model, where it's like, if something does not get resolved, but there's this guy, and we all know who it is, who will make the final call. Because that is sort of clear ahead of time that that causes less frustration. So you make, you make a good point. We did partially cover it. I guess I didn't put it as clearly as that. We don't have a good model for finishing a discussion, but the discussion itself is usually pretty good, pretty, uh, what's the word I want? Friendly? Not, that's not quite the right word. Courteous? Um, it's, yeah, constructive. Um, people, people don't get personal on our mailing list. You know, it's, it's nice, it's clear, and we do try and take account of people's viewpoints. It, it usually goes pretty well. The problem is when is it finished? That's the bit we're really struggling with most of the time, and I guess that's pretty common, right? So who makes the final decision? No one. That's the problem. <laughs> that is the problem. That's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to get to. Is like, how do we actually solve that problem? Because really, as far as I can see, it, there are three methods, right, which we've mostly covered, which is the technical council voting or some third-party tooling like Lumio, which is really just a vote anyway. And those all have their consequences. The question is, which consequences are we happiest with? But then I have to have one more discussion on our dev mailing list about which thing to do, and then hopefully we can be done with it. <laughs> Sorry, you had a thing. Yeah, uh, do you have a, a, a timeline for the discussion? How long does it take? Like, you have to take a decision until that. Some decisions obviously have that built in, right? If you're talking about what needs to happen before the next release, well, we have time based releases, so therefore there is a deadline for when code freeze will happen and so on. Other things, no, the discussion is done when it's done. Uh, because if you, uh, based on your experience, you know approximately when is the time when the discussion is. Yeah, it's about two weeks, right? You should, uh, you yeah. Just to put in every discussion a, a, a deadline. So that by that time. But, but, you, you, but you come back to Laura's point, right? If you put a deadline in, you still have to work out how you're going to take a decision at that deadline. And that's the bit we're missing. Uh, is someone going to make a decision? Is it going to be a vote? Are we going to take it to the technical council? How do we actually solve that problem? Um, it, it feels to me, having and thanks for everyone's input, I guess we're just about running out of time. So I'm going to, I'm going to wrap it up there. So. Um, it feels to me like probably the technical council might work better than I first thought. It felt very heavy to me initially, but if it works well for 40 contributors, it probably would work well at 20 contributors. It's the same order of magnitude, right? So maybe maybe that's something we should look at again. Um, I really feel votes can be divisive, but hey, maybe PHP has got something to teach me there. Um, maybe it's not as bad as I think. Anyway, thank you all very much for your input. Uh, it's been lovely hearing uh, your opinions. I'm happy to continue the, the discussions. We have a, a booth down in the K building, so come find us. Um, this is the various links if you want to find me on the forum projects. And thank you very much. <laughs>